So this is our morning routine for our meat chickens. We take our grain and we wet it down so we don't have as much like dust loss. We fill all our feeders before we let the chickens out and we put them at the end of where we want our chickens to go. So And when we place them, we kind of put them far enough away from the fence that the chickens don't get zapped and they can eat on both sides. And then just kind of line them up. You can use whatever feeders you have. This is also our water that we have. Can you hold up for me? It's just a large rubber bottom. And then it is a five gallon bucket with, um, holes drilled in the side so we've done it with two holes and we've done it with four holes and you said that you liked it better with the with just the two holes so there's just a little attachment that you get to that uh, living traditions homestead has a, a tutorial on how to build them but it's just as simple as drilling two holes in the sides of it and this is just what you do every day a lot easier and less expensive than some of the more expensive waters. So we just bring down our water in the morning. If you had a hose, it would just be really easy to fill. And then we just flip it. And that's it. And then it fills up to right above those holes and stops. And then as it gets lower, it just refills throughout the day and the chickens can drink out of it. So that's our watering system, and you can use whatever feeders you have, but we just happen to have extras of these chick feeders. And here they come. They know it's feeding time. So <laughs> there's kind of a, a lot of people think that Cornish cross aren't healthy. Um, they can't move. So they are just shy of eight weeks. We could process them next week if we wanted to. Um, but this is them at just shy of eight weeks. You can see they're moving around fine. They're nice and clean. Um, they love to eat. And then Sean just takes their chicken coop and moves it off of the area that they were on the night before. So they have shade during the day and they um, will continue to fertilize that area. So I'll kind of show you what it looks like behind. So. I just pulled this one. I take this. this is the area they were in last night. So this is where they fertilized all last night, the day before, the day before that. So you can see that they've moved all the way through here and deposited all their fertilizer. And it's already growing back from where they started. Sean's just going to take down half of the fence and move it behind them. So we're just going to fold it over and then like move the rest of that fence up and close it in the front. So I'm going to help him with that. Don't start it. Wait a second. Let me finish this video. Go ahead, Sean. I'm pausing it.
Okay, what I was saying is we got this. It, it's sort of like a temporary cage, um, coop cage off Amazon. Um, and we just pick it up and move it to the next section. This is just a piece of black rubber that we had to give them some shade. But um, this has been really easy to move if you don't have like the ability to build something, but you do have some grass to stick them in. And they still fertilize like this whole area. I just zapped myself because I forgot to turn off my <laughs> electric fence. Um, so they've already fertilized this whole area. And then we're just going to move them today. And this is another solution. It's definitely not as predator proof, I would say, as that one is. And it doesn't give them as much room. But in a pinch, this has worked out really well. It was very quick to put together. It, if you have some grass, it's sufficient for raising. Like, let's say you're going to raise 25 to 30 meat birds. And you wanted to move them through your grass. This would totally be sufficient if you were not in a high predator area. And that's it. They're moved. So this is about just shy of 35 birds. And we moved this over. You can see that they fertilized this 